everybody. Give it up for Mr. Matt LaCroix in the house. <laughs> what do you think? Is it just hidden in plain sight? Are the ancients trying to, you know, build a library of information for us to to see and, you know, to have her preserved for us so we can decipher it and try to figure out what's going on? I do really appreciate this question because, you know, the title of the panel gives a bit of a predetermined outcome for what all this is. But I like that you, instead of just saying we're going to only talk about ancient aliens, I like that we're discussing other aspects of our reality, other potentials. And of course, the universe is a vast and incredible place and they're must be infinite amounts of life. I mean, I think but there's evidence, there's strong evidence that it speculates about even like octopus and squid that there's strange aspects of them that may have come from somewhere else, like Titan or something. But I actually think a lot of that conversation is noise. It's noise to me because it distracts us away from discussing, and discussing all of this on a higher level. But not only on this higher level, it distracts us from discussing what the evidence, in my opinion, really shows. And it's not about us having this question about whether we're alone or not. I don't think that's even a question anymore. The real question I think we need to ask ourselves is all of the ancient megalithic technology, the ancient teachings, all of the great murals that show winged gods and all these great deities from Sumer to the ancient Inca to the ancient Egyptians all the way through the Greeks, what about the fact that those similarities share nearly identical aspects nearly every culture around the world? So then I asked that question, like, well, where do gray aliens fit in? Where, do all the, where does all that fit in? Well, I personally think a lot of that is noise. And I think it's distracting us away from looking at it in a different angle. First of is all, the, what, let, me, let me ask you real quick so yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Are you saying is the question noise or is the answer noise? I think the focus is noise. I think that we're looking in the wrong way. Right. And so right. your question when we first came in here, when we first sat down, I believe is spot on. Right. Who are these great teachers, these great benefactors of humanity that have left us the greatest teachings we ever knew? The ways to find our way home, the ways to understand who we are, because I think the question of who they are is really the question of who we are. That's right. And I think it's one and the same. And so I think instead of thinking about these external groups from star systems that are vast distances away coming here and creating something like us, perhaps we need to look at more like we're the image of them. And that perhaps it's far greater than just the randomness of some small jewel of a planet in the vastness of the universe that doesn't matter and that there's infinite amounts of that understanding of what was left behind in our past before it was rewritten by monotheistic religions and other groups that came later. We have to go back to the very core of where it started to understand where it began. And that takes us back to this understanding that we may be part of something that's far greater than just, just some kind of green men that come here. But more or less, the what I'm finding when I study ancient sites, like I'm looking throughout Lake Vaughan and ancient Ionis Temple, with these winged gods that are passing the knowledge of higher ascension and the first cross in history. What are they trying to tell us? I think they're trying to tell us that we're far greater than we understand. That we're actually left here in a way where we're, everything is engineered for our growth and our maturity of our consciousness. And then instead of looking at this like we're just some infinite place that doesn't matter, perhaps it's more of like the great stage of everything. Woo, man, Matt LaCroix. Hey, Matt. Are you sure they're green, though? I, I, let me ask you a question. I don't think they're green. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah, are, are you suggesting, um, and I don't want to put words in my mouth, but this is the way that I feel. Yeah. But it sounds like what you are suggesting is that we are looking at us and that maybe DNA and chemistry is indeed universal yeah. and it is everywhere so why would be why would we be surprised if they had two arms and two legs well and, and green skin imagine this for a moment just put aside this predetermined conceptions imagine the universe has this 
blueprint creator that is left behind in the golden ratio in every aspect of this hidden mathematical design. So there is a creator, but that creator is more off hands. That creator is more of like lay the blueprint and then let things unfold with a certain uh, code embedded in it for perhaps a predetermined outcome, but how you get there is a little bit unknown. Right, right. And imagine though, that that universe, instead of being random, has the blueprint for that design, but there still need to be almost like gardeners. Right. The terrestrial planet of Earth right now has the most amount of quartz, silica, of any planet we know in the universe. Quartz is like a giant energy resonant field. It's a giant crystal. What kind of creation could you do in a place like that? And that's why with the more that I've been looking at it, the more that I've come to this conclusion of, I think we're looking at this wrong, is that I think that they, as the powerful creators in this universe, created us as an experiment. I think we are them. I think they created us to experience a physical reality in this world, as an experience to see what would happen if you took a powerful creator God, put it into a body, in a physical reality, stripped away every gift it had, and then made it forget everything it knew. What kind of story would that come out, right? Matt, Matt, Matt freaks me out. Just imagine. We are them, and they created us. <laughs> But yeah, that's amazing. Can I add one more point to that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so why are we so violent? Why are we so disconnected? Why do we not understand oneness with the earth and with the universe? And what happened? That bond of heaven on earth, that connection we used to have to understand who we are, what we are doing, building incredible temples and pyramids aligned to the stars. We forgot that because our planet was hit by catastrophes and they wiped out that memory of who we were. That's right. And that's part of that journey. That's now, right. the whole purpose though of all of this, I believe that the keys were handed to us long ago and we lost them. And the whole goal now is so that we can consciously evolve with all of these things on this great stage so that one day we'll finally be ready to step up and finally take on the responsibility that we've been groomed for all along. Yeah, well said, Matt, well said. Congratulations on the book. Appreciate it. What's up with the purses? You're next, William. What's up with the purses? Well, it's really interesting, and I know, of course, Andrew can jump in on this because he's an expert on Gobekli Tepe, but the, what is being discussed is on what's called Pillar 43. It's a specific pillar that has uh, a constellation of Cygnus above it. Now, what's interesting about Cygnus, that Andrew, of course, knows all about this, is that Cygnus is called the Northern Cross. What's interesting about that is that the pillars from Gwaki Tepe mimic, like Lyndon was saying, Sumerian and ancient, uh, Sumerian or pre-Assyrian um, civilization drawings, because we see those same handbags all around the world, whether it's Leventa, Mexico, with yep. the Olmec, or yep. throughout South America, throughout, um, throughout especially Mesopotamia, but it seems to be, to me, it's this passing of like the ultimate knowledge. If, I, if you were to imagine, if you were going to try to show what it would be like to, to have all knowledge, like how would you do it? Like how would you show that you had all knowledge but you wanted to pass knowledge? They seem to show it through two symbols. One, they're always holding this handbag and then they're passing like a pine cone, okay? Now, I believe the pine cone represents the seeds of knowledge. So basically, if you were to pass the ultimate knowledge of everything, what could you grow? What kind of garden could you grow if you taught about laws and rules and agriculture, metallurgy, astronomy, ast um, uh, everything? Like, what could you create? But then what could you create if you lowered the ultimate knowledge of us reaching higher states of consciousness and ascension? I think you're creating infinite possibilities. And I think that's why we see it all around the world, because... We see this correlation with this group known as the Apkalu all around the world. They have different na names, but essentially they come down to this traveling group that seems to have gone around the world and created civilizations and then moved on. Now, getting back to pillar 43, on that pillar, it has three handbag symbols. Now, I know there's some interpretation of what that could mean, but I think what it means is that because the handbag symbols are only on pillar 43, none of the other pillars that go back to Tepe have them. And the, the fact that the Northern Cross of Cygnus is right there, and we happen to know that Danab, the Northern Star, is one of the brightest stars in the night sky. 
And when we look into that, you find out it also might have some kind of a portal connection, like Andrew was talking about too. So I believe that it's possible that they're talking about where knowledge might have come from. Is that there may have been the ultimate knowledge and might possibly a connection to where even the Anuna could have come from some kind of a portal or gateway through Cygnus. Could be, could be, but I think it's a fashion statement too as well. <laughs> Let's not forget about the Hermes belts that they are wearing. And the wristwatches. That's uh, Hermes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Matt LaCroix, you spoke earlier. What else are you doing this weekend? Well, uh, if anybody wants to dig deeper into that amazing research for the Eastern Turkey that connects to these symbols around the world, around Lake Vaughan, we are going to be launching a major expedition around the world to four countries, Turkey, Egypt, Peru, and Bolivia, with scientists, archaeologists, to finally change the narrative of history once and for all. So make sure you check out thestageoftime.com if you want to be involved in that. 